In this video, I will be discussing the processes involved in genetic engineering and some applications of recombinant DNA technology. Genetic engineering involves manipulating genes in order to make useful products. It is concerned with simple addition, deletion, or manipulation of a single trait in an organism to create a desired change. In the molecular level, it is copying a piece of DNA from one organism and joining this copy of DNA into the DNA of another organism. And the purpose is for allowing genes from one organism to be inserted into a cell of a different organism of a different species. Examples include human genes inserted into a bacterium or cells from other animals, or bacterium genes inserted into plant cells. For genes, by the way, genes are the factor that controls the inheritance of a character or trait, such as hair color, the color of your eyes, skin color, and many more. Going back, genetic engineering means that DNA from different organisms can be combined. For example, Bacteria can be engineered to produce human proteins, or human genes, as mentioned earlier, can be inserted into other animals. And this is the overview of genetic engineering. The altered DNA is called recombinant DNA, and the recombinant DNA is joined to other unrelated DNA in the organism, as mentioned, the DNA of one organism can be inserted into other organism or genes can be, com can be combined. And this is done through gene splicing where tiny fragments or segments of a DNA are taken out and replaced by different genes. The organisms whose Genomes or fragments of DNA or the genetic makeup are altered by the process of genetic engineering are called transgenic organisms. These are organisms which genetic material are changed other than random natural breeding through gene transfer or the moving of gene from one organism to another. Transgenic means from the word trans crossing from one place to another, and genic bit means genes. So it means that bits of genes from different living things have been bolted together and spliced into another organism to make a new one, which does something which the scientists wanted to do. Examples of transgenic organisms include GMO and GEO. GMO are genetically modified organism, while GEO are genetically engineered organism. For example, plants that resist a particular type of weed killer, sheep which makes some special substance in its milk. By the way, GMO and GO are two terms that are often used interchangeably but they are not the same thing. Just look at the spelling of course. Okay, kidding aside, an organism such as a plant animal or bacterium is considered genetically modified if its genetic material has been altered through any method, including conventional breeding. While GEO, are, these are organisms modified using techniques that permit the direct transfer or removal of genes in that organism. Genetically modified and engineered organisms are also known as transgenics, of course. They are the example of transgenic organism. Other examples also include the glow-in-the-dark tobacco, which has a firefly gene, the fluorescent pigs and mice, which have jellyfish gene, Bt corn has an insect resistant gene from the soil, bacterium bacillus thuringiensis. These are just a few. And uh, there are five stages involved in genetic engineering. First one is isolation, then after that, there will be cutting, then ligation and insertion, there will be transformation, and then the expression of the, of the gene. In the first step, you have isolation. In the case of human, the gene of interest is then transcribed on the genetic probe to reveal the position of the gene of 
interests. While in the isolation of a plasmid, actually a uh, plasmid is a small, often circular DNA molecule found in bacteria and other cells. Plasmids are separate from the bacterial chromosome and replicate independently on it. They generally carry only a small number of genes, notably some associated with antibiotic resistance, for instance. In the isolation of plasmid from a bacterial cell, the circular structure is disrupted to create a lysate. A lysate is a preparation containing the products of lysis. Bacteria are lysed or destroyed or dissoluted with a lysis buffer. So it's a lysis buffer solution containing SDS or sodium dodecyl sulfate and sodium hydroxide. Then we have cutting. The restriction enzymes work like a pair of scissors to cut restriction sites in the DNA. So you can see in the figure, the ones represented by scissors, pair of scissors, are actually to illustrate the function of your restriction enzymes during the cutting process. To further elaborate the cutting process, you see there on the upper region is the donor DNA with the specified restriction sites which is identified as the region of the desired gene or trait. The restriction enzymes cut this portion from a plasmid or any other types of cells with the gene of interest. A sticky end is produced when the restriction enzymes cut at one end of the sequence on the restriction sites. The ends of the cut have an overhanging piece of single-stranded DNA. These are called sticky ends because they are able to form base pairs with any DNA molecule that contains the complementary sticky end. After the desired gene is isolated and cut, the next step is ligation or rejoining the cut fragments of DNA in forming artificial recombinant molecules. The fragments are joined together by an enzyme called DNA ligase. As you can see, after isolation, specific regions in the case of plasmid are cut and then foreign DNA fragment through the action again of restriction enzymes are cut and then the desired gene or genetic code is ligated or joined or inserted into the plasmid through DNA ligase and you now have a hybrid plasmid. After the ligation, the plasmid with the recombinant DNA is introduced into a bacterial cell, making a total transformation on the bacterial cell. And after the bacterium reproduced through binary fission, the newly produced bacterial cells now contains the genes coded for by the donor DNA. To put simply, genetic engineering is an area of molecular biology that involves manipulating the structure of genetic material while recombinant DNA is a strand of DNA that has been manipulated, isolated, cut, or inserted into the process of genetic engineering. Let us now proceed to the applications of the recombinant DNA technology in genetic engineering. First up, we have in the field of medicine. DNA technology has been used for diagnosis and treatment of diseases, correction of genetic disorders, manufacture of hormones and other pharmaceutical products such as vaccines. For example, genetically engineered microbes can be used to produce the antigens needed in a safe and controllable way. In the use of genetically modified yeast, for instance, to produce a vaccine against the hepatitis B virus has been a major success story as well. Then we have the production of eumulin. Eumulin is an intermediate acting insulin that is lower to act and last longer than human insulin. It works by helping blood sugar get into the cells so the body can use it as energy. This type of product is used by diabetics. The amazing thing about our DNA technology is that with gene probes, it makes possible the diagnosis of diseases even in fetuses prior to childbirth. It is also involved in detecting cytogenetic abnormalities, preventing various genetic disorders, understanding molecular events in bio biological processes like growth, differentiation, the aging. 
to name a few. Detectable genetic disorders may be corrected through a procedure called gene therapy. Gene therapy involves extraction of a few cells from the patient, addition of functional genes in cells of the patient that carries defective ones, and reintroduction of corrected cells into the patient. This procedure, however, can only be successful if the corrected cells will actively divide to produce more of its kind and if the protein products of the functional gene can correct the genetic disorder. The first successful gene therapy was performed way back in 1990 to a girl, a four-year-old girl with severe combined immunodeficiency disease. Agriculture too has reaped considerable benefits from the use of RDNA technology in the improvement of animal breeds and crop plant varieties, such as weed killer resistant crops, where weeds die but the crops survive, and also the golden rice you have there, which is assumed to be a possible solution to vitamin A deficiency. The gene which produces vitamin A was taken from daffodils and put into rice to help prevent blindness. RDNA technology also helps in the increased milk production in cows, disease resistance, insect resistance, and herbicide tolerance in crops, and delayed ripening of fruits are just a few applications of the RDNA technology. RDNA technology is also used in environmental cleanup where some modified microorganisms can be used to extract minerals from the environment or degrade potentially toxic waste materials. In the field of forensics, RDNA is used to identify the banding patterns of DNA fragments retrieved at the scene of the crime, which uh, are then compared with those obtained from a primary suspect. However, clear guidelines in the use of the technology need to be defined if it is to be used as a reliable tool in establishing innocence or guilt in solving crimes. Apparently, technologies that develop new important products and useful processes hold great promise in the progress of basic research in the advancement of, of agriculture, medicine, and forensics. However, there are serious safety and ethical issues that need to be addressed, such as extensive erosion and genetic destruction of germ plant germplasm, ecological imbalance, production of dangerous toxic chemicals, production of highly lethal microbes and their use in microbiological warfare to kill humans, animals, and plants. Although genetic engineering has yielded a more effective way of producing new organisms with novel and useful characteristics, these cases show that the field is still unpredictable and uncertain. Introduced genes, in addition, may behave differently when working with a new host. And the new combination of host genes and introduced genes may have unpredictable effects. And there's just no way of knowing the long-term effect of genetically engineered foods on the health of those who eat them in the field of agriculture, for instance.